Hi, this is Jean Thorne from Animation Magazine. I'm the president and publisher, and I'm happy to be with you here tonight to welcome all of our Hall of Fame recipients for 2020. We're very sad that we can't be with you physically this year and give all the recipients the hugs they deserve, but we know that next year we'll reconvene in Los Angeles at the World Animation and Visual Effects Summit to give out new awards and hopefully some of these people will be able to come and receive their just due from all of us in person. Um, tonight's awards would not be possible without the help of our sponsors. They've been incredible to come on board virtually at the last minute and help us put this together. And I'd also like to thank my wonderful Ramin Zahed. He is our leader and editor in chief. He is always there for everyone in the world of animation. And I think if any of you have dealt with him, you know how fantastic he is. I just can't say enough. Um, and then also Kim Darabalani, our our wonderful event leader and uh, director. She has put this together virtually with Sham, who has always done our videos in the back of the room, you know, at the summits in person. And uh, the two of them, I think, have done a great job. I also want to thank my staff at Animation Magazine, who are always there to do what they can. We have a small team. We've always been virtual, so this isn't terribly difficult for us but we just hate not being out in the world to see you all. So enjoy the show. Uh, let us know if you liked it or not. We hope that you enjoy the free magazine that we're giving you, the free subscription for a year of Animation Magazine digitally. We hope to see you next year at, at our event next year in November here in Los Angeles. And uh, we hope you're all safe and well for the holidays and that we see you soon. Thank you so much. Enjoy the show. I'm very honored to be able to introduce Kemp Powers, our co-director and screenwriter for Pixar's newest film, Soul, for the 2020 New Voice in Animation Award. This is an award from experts in animation, and as an animator myself, I can say it's a great group to be recognized by. As you know, Kemp is a relatively recent convert to the animation medium, which he comes via journalism, playwriting, screenwriting. He brings all of this to the work and much, much more. Throughout it all, his powerful storytelling is the foundation of Kemp's incredible line of work. On Soul, Kemp was able to help us find our main character, Joe. It was important to us that we tell Joe's story as authentically as possible, a story about a black musician living in New York City, a life which reflected Kemp's own life. But Kemp's contributions extended way beyond that to practically all aspects of the film, including but not limited to characters, set design, casting, animation performance, music. The film would not be what it is today without Kemp's work and contributions. I'm very proud to know Kemp, had the opportunity to work with him and become friends. I have no doubt he'll continue to be a leading force in the animation medium. Animation Magazine has been a longtime supporter of Pixar, so thank you to the magazine for honoring Kemp in this way. Kemp, you deserve it. Got anything to say? Thank you, Animation Magazine, for honoring me with your 2020 New Voice in Animation Award. And thanks a lot, Pete, for that super kind introduction. Working with Pete, Dana, and all of the incredible team at Pixar has been one of the greatest highlights of my career. Uh, as Pete mentioned, prior to my work on Soul, I was really new to the animation space. I'd written plays, I'd written films, television episodes, but writing and directing for animation has been an entirely different and rewarding experience that I, that I honestly never could have expected. The detail that goes into making Pixar films is, is really astounding. And I'm so glad that I had the opportunity in my career to bring one of these amazing stories to life and witness just the incredible amount of collaboration that takes place at, at Pixar, which is a wonderful studio. Um, it was especially, Rewarding, however, that the Pixar story that I got to help craft was Soul. Um, as Pete mentioned, Joe Gardner and his journey was something that just resonated with me from the, the very start. Um, you know, Joe, like me, is a middle-aged black man from, from New York City. Um, and his journey, at least the journey we were trying to tell, was something that I really related to on a, on a personal level. Um, 
But it's not just my similarities to Joe and his path that drew me to the, the film Soul. Um, it's, you know, the fact that like many other Pixar titles, it asks big, important questions in life. What makes you, you? Um, what's my purpose in this world? What makes us who we are? What gives us that spark um, in our lives? And I'm just so glad that I had the opportunity to continue exploring my own life spark and purpose by helping to tell Joe's, Joe Gardner's story for, for an audience that in, includes all of you. So, so thank you once again to Animation Magazine for this, this great honor, this great award, and I'm going to cherish it always. There he is. Hey, Curly. Leon skipping town really put us in a bind, man. Yeah, yeah I, I'll bet. Glad you made it. My boy Bishop said he uh, sat in with you on a set last year in Brooklyn. Said you were great. Well, <laughs> you don't have a bar coffee shop. the cat I was telling you about. My old middle school band teacher, Mr. Gardner. Call me Joe, Dorothea. I, I, I mean, uh, Miss Williams. Uh, it's a pleasure. Wow, this is amazing. Uh, Joe is Ray Gardner's son. So, we're down to middle school band teachers now. Get on up here, teach. We ain't got all day. What, what do we play? Sorry, I zoned out a little back there. <laughs> Joe Gardner, where have you been? I've been uh, teaching. Middle school band. Uh, uh, but on the weekends, I... You got a suit? I... Uh... Get a suit, Teach. A good suit. Back here tonight. First show's at 9. Sound check's at 7. We'll see how you do. Creative vision. No two words could better describe my friend Noelle Stevenson. I first met Noelle when I was auditioning for the role of Adora on his new show, She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. And I remember it was a, an unusually small room just, and it was packed with people. And I think Noelle was only like maybe 24 at the time. So 
they definitely looked more like a summer intern than a showrunner of a new Netflix DreamWorks <laughs> production. So I just immediately felt a kinship because we both looked so out of place in this room full of very high powered executives. And it actually at the time reminded me like of one of those logic games, the which one of these doesn't belong. But I was so wrong because she did belong. And later, then that day, and as the years went on, she would make me feel like I did too. That day at my audition, they spoke with clarity and authority. And, and I remember he struck me as a kind of person that has a very specific brand of confidence. And that confidence only grows from years of having to go it alone and, and exercise that radical self-belief. Because so often in this business, we don't get a template or a framework. We, we have to forge our own paths. And this forging of one's own path requires vision above all else because nothing builds resilience like having to hold your own vision even when other people don't see it. And that focuses everything, especially in the face of that daily rejection and naysaying and the beat down that comes with show business. But eventually, if you're lucky, you share that vision with enough people that maybe a group of them hop on board and make a critically acclaimed animated series. But that wasn't an accident because Noelle's vision exploded onto the page and then later onto our screens in the form of She-Ra. And very much like her title character, Noelle, is passionate and strong. She is committed to justice and the celebration of every kind of body type and race and gender and sexuality. And I re remember when I, whenever I used to tease fans about a new like drop of episodes, my favorite thing to tweet was, you're not ready, because I thought it would get them really excited about the new season. But in actuality, the world was so ready for Shira because Noelle's vision sparks much needed conversations about inclusivity and, and subverting expectations. And personally, in me, his vision expanded the idea of what was possible in so many ways. Like their story, storytelling held, it just helped heal parts of me that I didn't even know were hurting. And it also cast light on the many ways that I could extend that healing to others. And I think that shows in 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 the story and i think it inspires the audience shira says we must be strong we must be brave and noel has those qualities in abundance and i think she has inspired them in a generation of audiences at its core shira and the princess of power is a love story a romantic love between two women but also the love of of community of of friendship of truth especially in this time, truth is so important. And only with vision and bravery and strength can we achieve that love in our own lives and that truth in our own lives. Noelle Shira has received Emmy, Critics' Choice, and Glad Media Award nominations. Individually, he has been honored as an Eisner Award winner and a National Book Award finalist. But despite all of these very well-deserved accolades, I will always know Noelle as a powerful force who always held the vision in the body of a scrappy summer intern. I am so grateful to count him among my friends and inspirations. So it is my honor to present Noelle with Animation Magazine's Creative Vision Award. Thank you, Amy, so much for that introduction. I have no idea how I'm gonna live up to that, so I'll try and keep this pretty quick. Um, thank you so much, Animation Magazine, for this incredible honor. I am blown away and just so, so grateful. Um, you know, Shira has been one of the most challenging and one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. Um, we set out to tell a story about love, about friendship, about strength and about bravery and about believing in a better world. Um, and so much of that was inspired by the strength and the bravery and the love that was on display every single day from the incredible crew that brought Shira to life. And when my strength failed, 
their strength carried me through. So I would like to dedicate this award to them, to every single person who helped make Shira what it is and poured their hearts and souls into it. So thank you, Jen, Kiki, Josie, Mary, Liz, Shane, Greg, Rebecca, Phil, Michelle, Chuck, Chelsea, Mandy, Amy, Marcus, Karen, AJ, Seth, Ashna, the incredible team at any for you, D and Don, um, all of you, and every last member of the crew who I don't have time to name, but just know that I'm thinking of you right now and that it was you that that made this possible. Um, and, and so thank you for giving everything that you had uh, and making this show as amazing as we all knew it could be. Um, and also thank you to Margie, Kelly, Peter, and Beth for believing in me and for giving me this chance. I'm so, so grateful. So thank you everybody. And uh, just in closing, I just wanna say that like Shira, I think it really taught me um, what the meaning of strength and bravery really is, that even when you don't feel strong, strong is something you do. And even when you don't feel brave, brave is something you do. And good is something that you do. We're never done trying to be better. We're never done trying to be more. We're never done trying to achieve that world that we know can exist. So thank you again, Animation Magazine, and thank you again to everyone who supported the show and for everyone who made the show possible. I am so, so grateful. I love you all. Thanks. Adora. Adora. Katra? The sword has chosen you. Glimmer? I see her, Bo. Your army is called the Evil Horde. Who calls us that? Everybody! I'm ready to fight to stop the Horde. What happened to you? The Horde is evil, Katra. You have to help me! <gasps> How dare they take best friends and turn them into giant sword ladies! Whatever you're planning, it won't work. <clears throat> Maybe it already has. Rise, Katra. For the honor of Grayskull! You might be thinking we don't stand a chance, but we can't give up. Hey, Adora. Why did you help me escape? I told you it's not because I like you. Because we have each other. The Horde always told me I was different, but you're making me feel the opposite of not belonging, which I guess is belonging. Because we have love. <laughs> it's time to fight. For our homes! And for each other! We got this! Prove it. We're gonna see the world! On the edge of greatness! Ta-da! Turning darkness to light! <laughs> Adora! We're right beside you, ready Adora. to fight! Did you just jump into fire for me? What? No! We're gonna win the <laughs> a masterful performance. You're my weakness. Kendra! Don't you get it? I love you. I always have. I love you too. Hello, hi everybody. Um, um, really delighted with this award from Animation Magazine and thank you to the Animation World Summit on Animation and VFX for giving us the Hall of Fame Game Changer to Cartoon Saloon. Um, my name's uh, Paul Young. I'm CEO and one of the founders of Cartoon Saloon. Um, and this uh, really means so much to me actually because um, back when we were pitching uh, the Secret of Kells in Potsdam at Cartoon Movie back in 2001 maybe or 2000. We first met the Gene Thorne, myself and Aidan Hart who were over there pitching the, the feature film on the bus or one of the coaches and we had a great chat with her. She was like, who are these, who are these two Irish fellas? And we were very young and, uh, at the time and just out of college um, and trying to pitch a show and we've continued that relationship. I've met Gene so many years now all around the world at various events and had such great chats with Gene and we, we used to we subscribed to Animation Magazine when we were in college and we had it all the way through and in our first studio Uncle Kenny which was like a 
when we went into St. Joseph's Studios here uh, in Young Irish Filmmakers and, and we'll always be reading the articles. I remember taking our first advert when we went to MIPCOM for the first time, a small little banner ad and being delighted to see ourselves uh, sort of, you know, in the industry, in the, in the magazine. Um, and uh, so this really does um, mean an awful lot to us. And I'm just so sorry uh, we can't be in Santa Monica because I've been there before for the, for the summit. Uh, and just, of course, it's cold and wet here in Ireland and it would be lovely to be in the sunshine um, and meet all our friends from, from LA. Um, and that's another uh, great thing about this award is because it means so much because uh, every time we've come to Los Angeles and California, we've had such a warm welcome and such great hospitality from all the people in and the studios in LA. We've always been invited into studios. We've been able to show our films in the studios, meet so many amazing, talented people across the whole industry there. We've just felt that uh, Every time we've we've come over, we've had such a fantastic welcome from everybody, and it, and um, really sad for us not to be able to to come over at this time. But uh, soon, uh, we hope to be back and see everybody again soon. So, really, thanks so much for this. It, it's it's amazing for us. It, it's really uh, I it's really touching for me, uh, and really a big deal for for me personally. Oh, and uh, here's my dog. Rosie wants to say hello. Rosie, come up. Rosie, and um, of course I couldn't have been able to bring Rosie, so this is quite nice. She can be here for this uh, for this award. Thank you, Rosie. Bye, everybody. Look forward to coming back to California soon. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, hi there. Thanks a lot, Animation Magazine. It's meant a lot to me and so many animators around the world to have access to the industry through this great publication. And thanks to the World Summit. I'm uh, Animation Summit. I'm Tom Moore. Um, I'm just delighted to be here. I'm a co-founder with Paul and Nora of Cartoon Saloon and it means so much to us to get this award. It's lovely. Um, and as Paul was saying, it's a pity we can't be there in California, but sure, it's nice in Ireland too. And uh, just thanks a million and um, really appreciate it. Thank you. Hello. Uh, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everybody at Animation Magazine for awarding Cartoon Saloon with the Game Changer Award for uh, 2020. What a year. <laughs> Um, we couldn't be considered game changers if it wasn't for the incredible people that we have working with us every single day. Jerry Sharon, Catherine Roycroft, Katja Schumann, Paul Deegan, to name but a few of the incredible people that we have the pleasure and honour of working with. We couldn't be considered game changers if it wasn't for the support that we received over the last 21 years, be it from Screen Ireland, a government body which really encouraged uh, us to develop our own unique voice, our co-producers across Europe, in Canada, in the United States, um, our friends in the industry around the world who have wished us well and hoped that we could be the best possible versions of ourselves, we will strive to continue to do the same and to usher a new generation of uh, storytellers, be it within our studio or with the, you know, w around the world as much as we possibly can. So goodbye 2020 and hello 2021. <laughs>
It's a great honor for me to present my friend Marc Duportavis to Animation Magazine Hall of Fame. What a wonderful recognition. My name is Michael Dudoktovit. I'm an animation director and my work includes the short film Father and Daughter and more recently the feature film The Red Turtle. Marc and his production company Xilam have long had the reputation of very successfully producing animated series in the fast cartoony style. More recently, Marc suddenly, surprisingly, came up with this extraordinary feature film, I Lost My Body. Like so many of my colleagues, I'm in total awe of this feature, which was, which was directed by Jérémy Clapin. I admire it for its breathtaking beauty and its fine intelligence. Very importantly, I Lost My Body is a strong inspiration to those of us who are interested in making films that are strikingly different and aimed at more adult audiences. Many congratulations to Marc and I very much look forward to seeing what he does next. Hello, my name is Marc Dupontavis and I'm happy to welcome you in the premise of Zilam Studios in Paris. Especially on this day, as Animation Magazine is honoring me with this remarkable award. For me to share this with so many brilliant artists and visionaries in animation is quite an accomplishment. I'm not sure I've helped to change the game, but it's true that I repeatedly wanted to bring to the audience something different. 20 years ago, at a time where Chase Cartoon had disappeared from the screen, I was excited to revisit such a noble genre. And Dilam Studio made his name with many of those like Augie and the Cockroaches or Zig and Sharko. But the more stories I was telling in animation, the more I felt this medium was boundless. Hence my will to push the limits and explore not only adult animation, but moreover, a writing that many felt was a sign to live action. That was the statement behind I Lost My Body, brilliantly directed by Jérémy Clapin. At least I hope this film could help opening the game. Thank you so much to Animation Magazine and to all the great talents from Xilam Studio who made this journey possible.
everybody. Uh, I wish I was there in person with all of you. Um, my name is Christine Belson and I am the president of Sony Pictures Animation and today I have truly the great privilege to introduce a dear friend and colleague and recipient of Animation Magazine's Game Changer Award for 2020, Karen Tolliver. Karen, you and I have known each other a long time. I remember our sushi lunches where we would compare notes, not only on working in animation, but also on raising our boys and just the struggles of the life-work balance. Um, I looked forward to those lunches so much, and even then, I dreamed of being able to work alongside you one day. So I guess what I'm saying is that when you were finally ready to make a change and came and joined me at Sony, you made my dream come true. Um, and honestly, working with you has been a dream for all of us at the studio. Karen, you are deeply beloved and respected by artists and executives alike. And a true leader, you've had tremendous impact on our studio, helping us raise our game in so many ways, including bringing a greater focus to authenticity and representation within our projects. You've been a driving force on Connected, our wonderful Lord Miller movie, such an incredible partner to our filmmaking team on Vivo, our Lin-Manuel Miranda musical. And how can I ever thank you enough for bringing Hair Love to Spa? We are forever proud to have been part of that journey. And speaking personally, I've never been part of something like that, something that was such a big part of the national dialogue, something that mattered so much on such a personal level to so many people. And the fact that we get to continue to tell personal and impactful stories about the Young family now in series form is so gratifying and so, so exciting. And so in closing, I would just say thank you, thank you, thank you for making our studio what it is today, for being such an amazing partner, for being a great friend, and just for being so damn cool. Um, I'm really excited for what the future holds. I, I feel like we can conquer anything together. I really do. Um, and so now, before I get weepy, um, I would like to introduce the recipient of Animation Magazine's Game Changer Award for 2020, the one and only Karen Tolliver. Thank you, Christine. And thank you, Animation Magazine. This is incredible. I mean, and surreal. It's just... It's just, I'm an executive. I've been an executive for most of my life and sitting across the table from the most talented artists that I've wanted to work with and, and share their vision and help them. And these are most of the current and past recipients of this award. award. So for me to even be amongst that group of people, it just doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, but really at the heart of it, to me, I'm a storyteller. And when I first saw a story room and animation for the first time, I really understood the power of this medium. I saw, you know, an early idea in the room being pitched. I saw it was really collaborative. People were jumping in and making it better. I saw people quietly drawing in the room. And for me, I really saw how it evolved and what this process can be. Um, and it was something I saw that was powerful and I wanted to be part of it and never wanted to leave. And, and I never did. And then I had the opportunity to work on Hair Love as a producer. And that was the most personal journey that I've ever been on. And, you know, it was so, so satisfying through the process of just sharing myself and, and sharing and being part of it with the directors and producers that, um, by the time we got to share it to an audience, that felt like icing on the cake. And then the reception was just more than we could ever uh, imagine. So I take that experience with me moving forward and just really want to be authentic in our stories and bold. And, and you know, I, I'm so pleased by so many of the artists out there that are being collaborative and, and bold in their storytelling and, you know, just really pushing what animation can be. And I, I look forward to seeing all that stuff moving forward. So thanks again to Animation Magazine. This is just truly amazing. And congratulations to all the recipients.
I'm Marge Dean, head of Crunchyroll Studios. When we started Crunchyroll Studios three years ago, we agreed on two principles for our original content. One, we would represent what we loved and admired about anime to a broader audience, always with the deep respect and of the traditions and principles of the art form. That means to us rich stories with complex characters who travel huge, unique worlds and it's told cinematically and with beautiful art. And two, we would seek out diverse creators and artists. We wanted to find those stories that were not being told by mainstream entertainment. Extraordinary stories that could be told with an authentic and new voice. When Sophia brought us Onyx Equinox, we knew this was the one. The show represented all the things we had hoped for when envisioning Crunchyroll Studios. Under Sophia's guidance and vision, our crew produced a beautiful and engaging show that represents our shared aspirations. Congratulations, Sophia. We're so proud of you. I will now pass it on to Maurice, Marissa Balkis, creative executive and producer on Onyx Equinox. Thanks, Marge. I am so honored to present my colleague and friend, Sophia Alexander, with the Animation Magazine New Vision Award. I first met Sophia in the spring of 2018 during a general meeting. It was in this meeting that she pitched Onyx Equinox, her anime-inspired love letter to Mesoamerica, and I was instantly blown away. Her passion to share the glory of Mesoamerica, its gods, myths, history, and cultures with the wider world was unlike anything that I had seen before. And her desire to ground the story in present-day themes of a generation seemingly powerless to change the world around them, of the difficult quest for hope, resonated on a whole other level. Sophia put the entire crew of Onyx Equinox on a crash course in Mesoamerican history. She never compromised on historical attention to detail or cultural authenticity. She also never compromised on staying true to her characters, their quirks, their flaws, and their emotions. It is this uncompromising spirit that makes Sophia Alexander a true trailblazer and an undisputed visionary, making her the perfect recipient of the new Vision Award. Congratulations, Sophia. Thank you, Marissa and Marge for the introduction and an even bigger thanks to Animation Magazine for great honor. I am floored and humbled to be included among such talented artists. I want to start by thanking my wife, Anna, for encouraging me to pitch this show. I would not be here receiving this amazing award if it weren't for her. She was by my side throughout the years that it took to create Onyx. And she was also there when I thought I wasn't made of something stronger. I wanna thank Marissa and Tony for taking a chance on me and for believing in the potential and vision uh, that was on Equinox. And I would like to thank also my wonderful, incredible and passionate team. Thank you for your patience, the love and incredible work you put into every single day you came in. It goes without saying yet necessary that I could not have done this without you. I also want to thank Kumi, my mentor, my friend, my animation mom. Thank you for the guidance throughout the process of creating my first show. I have the rest of my career to live up to your expectations. To my parents, thank you to the opportunity of a better life and a chance to fulfill my dreams by moving into this country. It took a lot of courage and I am eternally grateful for that. I also want to thank my brothers who pushed me to be better and even pitched in into the initial concept. I also want to thank my family in Mexico, especially my abuelito El Matador and my uncle Armando, who I wish could be here with us for me to thank for all the wonderful memories of my childhood, visiting the archeological sites and the many pyramids that would inevitably inspire this show. I would also like to thank my friends who cheered me on, gave me their advice and a creative input to make this an even more heartfelt story. And finally, to my Mexico lindo. 
Este premio es un testamento a la belleza de nuestro país y herencia cultural. El mundo quiere ver nuestras historias y apreciar nuestra cultura. Este premio es una invitación a otros mexicanos creadores y soñadores. El mundo de animación está cambiando y juntos aseguraremos un futuro en el cual contar nuestras historias es un normal nuevo y no una fase de diversificación. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you so much. for as long as we can remember. We've remade humanity four times before. Isel, be brave. The gods have to pick someone else. Come on, adventure awaits. There was never going to be enough blood for all of us. So, let's make a bet of it. And the stakes? lives. I have a destiny to ensure you do yours. Hi, my name is Glenn Keane, and it's my pleasure to talk to you about Palin Chow, uh, the winner of the 2020 Animation Magazine's Producer of the Year Award. Uh, this woman deserves it. Uh, she loves what she does. It's so clear in the way she communicates. Uh, <laughs> when you're talking to Palin about something she believes in, if you didn't believe in it before, you will after it. She, she just grabs your attention. Uh, I was in Annecy in 2017. I just given a talk and somewhere along the way, she felt like Glenn's going to direct over the moon and uh, relentless in her pursuit and her conviction to communicate to you why you are the right one for this. This is a great skill of a producer they make you see the possibilities. Even if you don't understand it at the beginning, something inside of you says, this woman sees what I don't see. And she gave me this wonderful script to read and I, I was so thankful that I had an opportunity to direct this and to work with Pei Lin as a producer. The best producers have got this ability to take the things that they love and they put that into their work. Uh, her, her love of China and that whole world there, bringing us in as a tour guide, uh, showing us the traditions and the, the technology of that world. Uh, her skill in creating a script with Audrey Wells that was so deep and profound with such joy and uh, magic to it. Her, her love of music and Broadway, introducing us to the musical talent, her, her skill in filmmaking every step of the way to give guidance in the most gentle way and giving complete freedom as a creator. Uh, there is nobody better to work with than that kind of a producer. And Pei Lin Chow, as I said, deserves this award. 
Uh, and so it's with great joy I present to you Palin Chow. Thank you so much, Glenn. And thank you, Animation Magazine, for this incredible honor. I'm truly, truly humbled. Um, I love making films for a living because I believe that movies can change the world, especially animated films, because how else can you reach children all around the world, often in their native languages, and show them people and cultures and places that they may not have ever seen before? So thank you so much for shining a light on films like this. Um, you know, growing up, I never thought I would produce animated films for a living. I just didn't even know it was a job that you could have. Um, luckily, in college, I wandered into a theater where I saw The Little Mermaid. And when Ariel reached out at me through that screen singing part of your world, uh, I was completely hooked. And I knew that it was something that I had to be a part of. Uh, so it was so particularly special um, to be able to work with Glenn and um, be a part of this journey of Over the Moon. Um, this award really belongs to our entire Over the Moon team, which is a group of extraordinary people that came together with such a sense of mission and destiny and purpose and just total and complete belief in what we were creating. Um, so I just want to thank um, so many people that were involved um, in creating this film, uh, starting with Netflix and Pearl Studio who produced the film, um, especially Melissa Cobb, Greg Taylor, and Frank Zhu, who believed in this film from the very beginning and supported us all along the way. Um, also our incredible voice cast, our fantastic songwriters, and our composer, and our entire crew and creative leadership. Um, from all around the world, this was truly, truly a global production. Um, we had artists in Shanghai, Los Angeles, New York, uh, Europe, uh, Vancouver, all coming together um, to create this truly special film. Uh, of course, I want to give a huge kudos um, and deepest gratitude to my partner in crime and fellow producer Jenny Rim. Um, who I call the miracle maker because she is out there doing that every single day. She brought the most amazing people onto this film and created such an ideal, warm, nurturing environment where everyone could do their best work. And Jenny is truly uh, such a gift um, to the world of animation. Um, and of course, um, our director, the one and only Glenn Keane. Um, who guided our rocket ship to pinnacles of artistic excellence um, that I never even knew existed um, and did so with so much integrity, um, kindness, generosity, um, openness, and, and joy. Um, so much joy on, on, on every single day uh, without exception. Glenn, I, I could not hold you in higher esteem or have more respect um, for what you do and, and how you do it. And I feel so, so blessed to have been part of this journey of Over the Moon. And finally, um, I wanted to thank our screenwriter and my dear friend, Audrey Wells, who passed away during the production of this film. Thank you so much for entrusting us with this story, um, your most precious love letter to your daughter and husband. Um, it is such a gift um, and something that I will never ever forget. Um, and so grateful to have the opportunity to tell little Fei Fei's story of love and determination and acceptance and healing. Thank you so much. Um, and once again, thank you so much Animation Magazine for this incredible honor um, and for recognizing our film Over the Moon. I'm truly, truly appreciative. Um, thank you so much. When I was growing up, I never saw anyone that looked like me um, in movies or on television shows, and it had a strong impact. So it has been so meaningful to me to have had the opportunity to be a part of telling these unheard stories and creating characters, Asian characters, um, that are real and complex and uh, hopefully aspirational or, or inspiring. Um, characters that maybe a child could watch and think, hey, I wanna be just like them.
is Sean Clark and I'm Arbun's Managing Director and I have the honour and privilege today to present the Animation Magazine's 2020 Game Changer Award to the founders of Arbun Animations, uh, David Sproxton and Peter Lord and Wallace and Gromit creator and director Nick Park. This is a truly fitting and deserved award where over the last 48 years the studio has demonstrated its ability to be pioneering and game changing in the way that it produces its animated productions and its philosophy and approach to doing business. Peter and David founded the studio back in 1972, which was the beginning of this unique partnership. And with complementary skills, they very quickly made a name for themselves. And graduating quickly to pioneer stop motion as a preferred art form, including a unique series for Channel 4 conversation pieces and Arben's first intellectual property, Morph, which still, all these years later, uh, the studio continues to produce series four. In 1985, Nick Park joined the studio, and I think it's fair to say, over the next 15 years, with the three of you front and center, things moved up a few gears on the world stage for the studio, with many, many highlights. But to name a few, Peter Gabriel's Sledgehammer video, which created many, many awards and helped define MTV, the studio's first Academy Award uh, with Creature Comforts, which was directed by Nick. And of course, the launch of Wallace and Gromit, which became and still is one of the studio's most loved and biggest brands. Over the last 30 years, with the unique culture you have fostered, it's, the studio has been able to create uh, a culture which has allowed creativity to thrive, creating timeless stories with characters that have connected worldwide. There's not enough time even to name check all the achievements, but the three of you have directed or produced eight movies, diversified into new areas including commercials, computer games, theme parks as far afield as Sweden, Australia, Japan, and it's fair to say the studio is much loved all over the world, with many awards including 10 Academy Award nominations and four Oscars. I did also want to just name check the Wallace and Gromit charity which was established over 25 years ago, where the three of you generously gave your time and the use of the characters, which has raised an amazing 70 million pounds over the last 25 years for hospitals in the Southwest. And finally, if there's one true example of daring to be different and really game changing, it was David and Peter's decision in 2018 to make the company employee owned. A pioneering approach to running a studio the size of Ardman, but one that future-proofs the independence and creative integrity for generations to come. So on behalf of everybody at Ardman, I would like to congratulate and present this fantastic award to David, Peter and Nick. Well, thank you, Sean. Thank you very much. And thank you, of course, to Animation Magazine for this lovely award. It's really wonderful. Of course, time of COVID, I have to say we wish we could be there. Of course we do. We'd love to be there in person. But um, we're still absolutely delighted with this. It's, it's so great. I understand that um, I'm happy to be called a game changer. That's, that's a good thing. Uh, you can imagine how much the game has changed for us. Dave and I started out as two kids at high school. Uh, we started animating for fun. And we stayed doing it for yes, 48 years or whatever it is. So it's been a long and interesting career. And what a lovely world to operate in. I mean, we found the world of animation to be friendly, um, collaborative, sociable, sane. In a, in a, in a world of lunacy, so many people in animation are, have been great friends and become great friends over the years. So I celebrate that, uh, celebrate our, our fortunate position. I think we've been very lucky to get where we are today. And again, Thank you to Animation Magazine. And now I shall wipe this down and hand it over to Dave. Yep, indeed. Thank you, everybody. What a fantastic award, the Game Changer Award from Animation Magazine. Possibly the cleanest award in the world at the moment, as it's been wiped down with cleansing swabs twice in the last few minutes. Um, Sean mentioned 48 years. It seems like a lifetime ago since those early days. Well, I guess it was a lifetime ago in many ways. It's a fantastic thing to, to have. Thank you so much. Great pleasure. We've had so many adventures with so many of you, so many festivals, so many lovely films that we've seen and that we've helped make. 
So all I'm going to say is thank you very much indeed for this wonderful award. Thank you. And now I'm going to hand it over to Nick. Nick, you don't need to wash it down, but I'll place it oh. by you there. Gosh, yes. What a, what a great honour. Exactly as the guys have said. And uh, so sorry we can't be with you. Sorry I can't be there in Bristol. I am uh, socially distancing, uh, well, 200 miles away, actually, um, just to be safe. But, um, yeah, what an honour uh, um, from Animation Magazine. It's uh, uh, what, after all these years, uh, 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 it's, it's such a, so great to be for the studio to be recognised in this way. Uh, it's so great when uh, your work across the whole studio is, for any artist to be recognised, is, is wonderful and, and so great coming from you guys. Thanks so much. Are we sitting comfortably? Hmm? Mm hmm? Thank you.